I will tell you this, I gotta put a disclaimer on this, it's gonna be gritty, okay? It's not gonna be real nice, but it's what I went through, okay? So I invited two people to come and join us in this talk since it's Black History Month. Uh, William Walter Smith is the first African American graduate of the University of Illinois, and Buddy Young in roughly the 30s to 40s, was a 5'4 running back that won the 100 meter, the, the 60, won everything in track and field, went and played like nine years in the NFL. So they're going to join us today for this talk during Black History Month. Okay, so that's me right there about 30 pounds ago, fired up with my class. Um, right now I mentor a bunch of people in SEAL training. Okay, we'll talk about it at the end. Okay, so... There's four things that we're gonna operate on when we get to SEAL training, okay? We operate it on before we get there. I'm gonna die before I quit, okay? That's not metaphorically, that's real, okay? And we're gonna talk about it, it hit me real quick. Uh, every day is Tuesday. Does anybody here mind coming to work early on Tuesday? Anybody mind going home late on Tuesday? But God help you if it's Friday and I ask you to work late, right? So every day is Tuesday until we actually get home to our beds, until we get to go do what we want to do, we get done with training. That way, Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock, when the instructors show up and start beating you until 7 or 8 at night, you're not having problems with it because it's still Tuesday. You don't really care. Okay? Be 400% prepared for every test. Okay? So we're going to talk about something that happened to me that was very enlightening. But if you're 400% prepared, what's the likelihood that you fail that test? Pretty much zero, okay? And you're gonna see, I was operating on a zero sum policy when I was at Bud's, okay? I didn't realize it at the time. These kind of got developed in 05 when I had a kid that didn't make it through SEAL training. But when you're 400% prepared, you're always ready, okay? And as my mom tells it, I disappeared for like 11 months when I went to SEAL training. She said, I didn't hear from you at all. Okay. Um, prepare today like tomorrow is a Super Bowl. Have a massive sense of urgency about today and your preparation for tomorrow because tomorrow could be your last day. Right. And when you get to the SEAL teams, the one thing you learn is like every day you have to earn your trident and every day, every month someone dies that you know. Okay. Most of the time in training related accidents. Okay. Everything we do in the SEAL teams is level five. Death, death is imminent. So... You first get out of buds, we had two guys die in buds in the class behind me uh, in the swimming pool, and you're like, okay. But I saw 40 people get CPR during pool comp, uh, scuba, qual scuba diving qualification. I saw 40 guys get CPR. Okay. On the pool deck, the color of that shirt right there, blue. Service, I did a service select out the Naval Academy SEALs. I, I was a run, rambunctious hellion playing football at 3.0. So I didn't do too much military stuff there, so they didn't like me. Even though I finished second in the screener, they sent me to a ship first. So I went to a ship for two years. I did a bunch of stuff on the ship, uber fast, so I could make the first lateral transfer board in the SEALs, and I got picked up. So when I finally got the SEAL training in 97, it had been five years since 92 when I had said I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. Okay, So put that in perspective. For five years, I did nothing but basically work my butt off to try to get to where I wanted to go, okay? So I came off my ship, it was October in Virginia Beach, I'm working out, I've been on the ship, I'm out of shape, and I'm working out for like three days and I'm like, this ain't working. I'm like, I'm gonna go to Bud's out of shape so it'll be harder, okay? And I'm gonna tell this story, my first experience at Bud's was a four mile time run, passing time was 32 minutes, I ran a, a 38.50, and when I got done, I was about to have heat stroke and pass out because I had heat stroke before I knew what it felt like. So I ran into the surf zone and laid out there for like 30 minutes so I didn't pass out my first day of SEAL training. Okay? All right, this gas station sits right in the middle of the SEAL compound on Virginia, in Coronado. Okay? It's a little NEX gas station sits there. Okay, what's so important about this gas station? You see where that little blue car is right there? Okay? In 1997, I was parked there in my little uh, brown beat-up Toyota pickup truck that I had. I was pumping gas into my car. And alongside of this pump on the outside, a little tiny MG pulled up. 
And Master Chief McGowan got out that MG. He was a black uh, command master chief for training at the time. All right? So he walked around his car. I kind of smiled. He said, sir, permission to speak freely. I said, come on, Master Chief. We're at a gas station. He was like, you need to understand where you're at right now. All right? There's been 13 black officers to come before you. So the, first, the last draft black officer to graduate from training was 1998, uh, Commander Rutherford. Okay? I'm sorry, 1989, Commander Rutherford. I'm there now in 97, and there have been 13 before me that had tried. Okay? He said, you, there's 13 that have tried. He said, I'm not gonna, he said, I'm gonna cut straight to the, the brass tacks. There's $4,000 riding on your head right now. And if you fail anything, they're gonna kick you out. Okay, a little somber, right? Appreciate that, Master Chief. I'll be just fine. Right? If I thought it was a game at that point, all the, little, all the lights in the room went off and I was in a hole and I was getting ready to go. Right? We hadn't actually started training, I just got there. Okay? So that's what I was faced with. You fail, you go home. A bunch of guys gonna get they gonna fail a whole bunch of stuff and get rolled and everything else, but you're not you're not playing by those rules. Okay. So Master Chief McGowan, I had to thank you. Okay, the first experience I had, so you do roughly two months of pre-training. They call it ramp up. Swim every morning, you're working out probably about 10 hours a day. Nothing crazy, you think it's crazy, half your class quits before you even start. Okay, but then you, so I started in October. We did October, November, half of December. We were on break for two, uh, three weeks. Came back in January. We classed up. The, the one of the first tests you take is drown proofing. Okay, so to put it in perspective, you see these guys in this pool. You know they got their hands and the feet tied. You can't really see, but there's some rope around their feet and their hands are tied behind their back. Okay, I got a kid that I'm gonna talk about later that said this is the easiest test he took in SEAL training because he can float, okay? I'm gonna tell you this. Clint Bruce, with me, we're talking about Clint Bruce here in a second, but Clint Bruce is a linebacker and they look at him, he's a Caucasian guy, big, thick dude. He can't float either, okay? This right here changed my life. So the story goes, we're practicing. I couldn't even stay on the surface. So when you practice, you just have your feet tied. You can use your hands to get back to the surface. So, for three weeks, we did it every day. Every day, I'm like, man, this ain't working, all right? So then the day before the test, I finally figured out if I turn my head to the side and I counted one, two, three, breathe, that I could do it. Now, problem was I still couldn't float. So when it came to the five minute float test, I had to travel, okay? And I'm gonna explain the test here in a minute, all right? So the day before the test, we're practicing in the 15 foot section. We do this in the nine foot section. Don't ask me why. And I'm on rhythm. One, two, three, breathe. One, two, three, breathe. Right? I'm rolling. And then I'm like, oh man, I got it. Oh, oh. And I'm standing at the bottom of the 15 foot section trying to do this. I can't get to the surface. All right? The instructor swam down to me. Grab me, brought me back up to the surface. He said, well, what are you doing? I said, not a hat. Okay. So I was quickly reminded how, how thin that line is between success and failure. Okay, so the next day, positive thinking, everything in the world, like I'm gonna pass this test no matter what. Okay, when all that's well and good, so I got in that pool. Okay, this is the pool. Okay, so the test basically is jump in the pool, do 20 bobs, so up and down. Easy for a guy to sink. Just jump off the bottom, get up, get a breath. Easy day, okay? Then you gotta float for five minutes. Told you I can't float. So my, I had this box. All the bad people were in the first row, so we were closer to the wall. All the people that could float were spread out across the pool, okay? So I'm in this box right here, and I gotta travel in a circle like this, okay? For five minutes. So I'm in that box, okay, so five minutes, boom, there. Then, after the five minutes of travel, you gotta go all the way across and all the way back. Then you do a front flip, you do a back flip, you pick up a mask, and you come to the side. Sounds easy, right? Okay, so let's talk about how it went for me. 
Okay? So easy, I'm in there, I'm bobbing like, ah, oh, man, we, we're good, okay? Trying to keep my heart rate down, trying to keep everything at a reasonable cope aesthetic so I can be okay. So boom, do my bobs, no big deal, okay? I come up for the, the flow, I see, I mean, we had guys that were floating like at their shoulders. Literally, they just floated for five minutes, okay? Not I. I had to travel in that square that I showed you. Okay, I'm in that square for five minutes. <coughs> Same thing. One, two, three, breathe. Okay, they give the, the, the signal. I take off on the travel. I'm like, man, okay. Just stay in rhythm. One, two, three, breathe. Okay, I get to the other side. Now, turning around when you're tied up in the pool is really hard. It's like a slow, you're just trying to get turned around. So as soon as I get turned around, everything starts getting dark out here. Okay? And I said, ooh, Houston, we got a problem. Okay? So I'm right about here. I'm in my lane, and I'm coming back. As I'm coming back, getting a little dark out here. Right. So, I'm like, man, what are we gonna do? We're running out of time. So, I get back, I'm about here, it's starting to get dark. We're about here now, okay? It probably took me 10 minutes to get across. The whole test took about 25 minutes. I was taking my every. I was taking as much time as I need. You didn't have a time limit, okay? But like that's a ten minute travel from here to here for me. To a dolphin kick, just trying to stay in my rhythm. One, two, three, breathe. Okay. So when I got back to my square right here, and I got my mask on in the water, so I got to go down, do a front flip, come up, do five bobs, go down, do a back flip, five bobs, okay. Pick the mask up in your mouth, and then make it to the side, okay? So when I get back, and I see my buddy, Clint Bruce, who is right there. We're gonna talk about Clint a little bit, okay? I saw Clint throw the mask in. And I knew right then I had to forego the bobs. I was gonna do the front flip, come up, go down to the back flip, grab the mask, and try to get to the side, okay? So this is where it got interesting. I told you it was like about here. When I got back and saw that mask come in, it was about here. And when I took a breath, it would go out a little bit, okay? So when I took that first bob and I went down and did my backflip, it came all the way into here, all right? And I got up, I got a breath of air, it went back out. Then I went back down, did my backflip, and went back to there. Okay. So now I come to the surface and I'm like, I got to get at least a couple breaths. Like I'm looking through that much. I know what's about to happen. And remember, what's the first axiom that we go into SEAL training with? I'll die before I quit. Right? It was weird because I tell everybody right before you about to have a real bad day, it gets quiet. There is no, there's no extra, there's nothing going on except what you're seeing and what your brain's trying to process to keep you alive. It was really quiet. Like I remember like it was yesterday, it was like, oh, we're about to pass out. Okay, we better figure something out real quick because this ain't going well. Okay, so I remember I went down, it was like this. I grabbed a mask in my mouth and I had forgotten when I got to the surface, I couldn't breathe because you got a mask in your mouth. So you can't get a breath of air. Now, the good thing is I was right there, right there on that line. So when I kicked off the bottom, I kicked to the wall, okay? They said I was about three feet from the wall when I came up. As soon as I hit the surface and I couldn't get a breath, it all went black. And I said, turbo, go turbo. I kicked as hard as I could, okay? And this is where the magic happened. So, 
my buddy Clint Bruce is on the side with my other buddy Tom Ryan. Played football with both them dudes. So they in my buds class because I went to the fleet. They were two years behind me. We all ended up in SEAL training together. It was awesome. I'm in, the, I'm in the fight of my life with some of my best friends. Okay, so Clint Bruce is standing there. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you back. I'm gonna tell you now Clint's side of the story because I'm gonna bring you back to where I woke up. Okay. So Clint said, as soon as I got back from the travel, he said, Oh man, Jake's gonna pass out. I said, Clint, how'd you know that? He said, You weren't doing well. We could tell. Okay. And he said, as soon as I saw you not do your five bobs in between the front flip and the back flip, I knew we were gonna have to do something. He said, so I came to the surface, and he said, as soon as I got to the surface, he said, I said, <laughs> he said, but I was about two feet away from the side. So he had Tom Rhino grab his hand. He reached out and grabbed my ear and pulled me in to the side. Then Tom and him picked me up, held me up on the side with their knees, held my arm out there and said, Zwig, okay. All right. So I wake up. I'm on the side of the pool. The Clint, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk. Okay. I've been in training long enough to know. I'm good. So I sat there. He was messing with my my uh, ropes, and the instructors were yelling at him, "Get him out! Get him out!" He was like, "Can't get the knot out." So I'm like, "Man, I'm just kind of waking up, like, what? Oh man!" So he messed with me about five minutes, and then Rhino says, "Hey, can you walk?" I, said, I don't know if I can do anything. Said, All right, look, we're gonna act like we can't get these knots untied. We're gonna go sit you on the wall. Okay. So boom, they pick me up, transport me to the wall. Uh, right here. So I'm sitting on the wall. Now everybody on the wall are the failures. All right, so I'm sitting over there, probably about 10 minutes. Clint comes back over, unties the knots, gets me out. He said, can you stand up? I said, no. Nah. It's all right, you just sit there some more. So then the instructors came and I was like, man, I gotta go to the bathroom. So then I went in the bathroom, there's a bathroom in here. And I sat on the toilet for another 15 minutes. Okay, I got myself together. All right. Still don't know what happened, really. But I knew this. They weren't make me get back in that pool and retest. <laughs> okay. So, boom. I come out of the bathroom. I'm okay. I'm walking around a little bit. Clint passed. All my guys, every, all, everybody passed. Like half the class failed. Let me get that right. Half the class failed the test. But my guys, like, we passed. Okay. So, I'm still trying to figure out what happened. I'm like, so, boom. We get done with the test. We're there for four hours. A couple of people failed it twice. We come out here, we form up on the street, and they're like, are you okay to lead the class? Because I'm a class officer at this point, so I'm in charge. And I said, no, nah, I'm, I'm still a little dizzy. So Ryan Angle led the class as soon as we took off running. So we run everywhere in formation. So I'm normally at the front. That's Ryan Angle, my boy. He took the class my spot, and I fell back about three or four spots in the middle of the pack. As soon as we took off, the whole class started laughing. <laughs> I'm like, man. And Clint was right next to me. He said, dude, you passed out in the pool, and we held your hand up and imitated your voice and got you to pass. <laughs> <laughs> I said, man. I said, thank you. And the whole class laughed. They're like, Jake can pass and die in the middle of the train. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just something like, that's real. All right, never flinched, never hesitated. Try to get done what I had to get done. If not, it ain't a bad day for the guy that dies. It's a bad day for everybody else around you. Just remember that. Okay? The guy that gets killed, he may have a little bit of pain for a little bit, but at the end of the day, he, he moving on. Okay? All right, so that's the day. Drown proof of story. Changed my life, though. Learned I could do things that I didn't. I, I, I mean, I believe anything is possible. But that's the first time that I had to push myself all the way to the edge and over the edge, okay? And then what you realize is, if you don't have this skill set right here, when you get to the SEAL teams, you'll drown, okay? Because there's a couple times in the SEAL teams that it was 10 times worse than this, 
I'd use every wit about me to stay alive. Huh? All right. Boom, the pool. All right, Clint Bruce is my boy. Okay, linebacker from the Naval Academy. We went all the way through training. We got a couple fights. You know, that's just what happens. They broke us up in third phase because we couldn't pass the swim. So we were swim buddies for most of the SEAL training, but then the third phase came, we had to swim fast. They broke us up. Okay, next story, same place. Look familiar? Okay, you see this circle down here, all right? Now, I haven't talked about a lot about the persecution that I faced there or that $4,000 riding on my head, okay? Because I'm gonna be honest with you. Once I heard that, I already knew that, okay? As an African-American, I can feel everything that's going on. I know when I'm in a place that I'm not welcome. Okay, so it was, it was very evident to me what was happening. So in my mind, with my mindset, I just had to let that go. I had to do what I had to do to be successful, which was be 400% prepared for everything. So I didn't feel anything. All right. So, we get to Hell Week. Anybody, everybody in here familiar with Hell Week and SEAL training? Anybody? Okay, so Hell Week basically start Sunday afternoon, you get three hours of sleep until Friday afternoon, okay? You're gonna run 225 miles, you're gonna paddle a boat about 60 miles, and you're gonna swim roughly about 35 miles in those five and a half days, okay? Couple really neat things I learned, you can sleep and still do stuff. <laughs> so you can carry a boat, you say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna go to sleep. You close your eyes, you're like a zombie. As long as you ain't running stuff, you'll be fine. You'll Put the boat down, pick the boat up. You can do all the commands. You wake up like four hours later like a new man. Okay? So Tuesday night, so I grew up in Tacoma, Washington. My dad's a truck driver. He was a really hard person. Okay? So he would tell me to go outside and play in the rain all the time. So I learned, like my body learned to adjust to the cold. So I really don't get cold. Okay, I might get a little chilly, but I don't get cold. So I was telling the instructors, because they were always trying to get the brother cold and seals ready, right? And I would laugh at them. I would say, you would kill somebody before you get me cold. Just so we clear, someone's going to die before you get me cold. Okay? And they'd be like, where'd it get you? And, you know, there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of mochissimo out of seal training, you know? And I would throw it back as much as I could, because you can't intimidate me with physical work. Okay? So Tuesday rolls around. We're in hell week. It's crazy. Don't really know what's going on. Just, I'm, a, I'm a class officer. Run around. Evolution to evolution to evolution to evolution to evolution. No stop. You got medical inspections twice a day. Okay? So you take off all your clothes. The doc looks at you from head to toe. All right? So medical inspections, 2 in the morning. So we show up to medical inspection. The whole class lined up right here in the street. Okay? So this is the decon shower. So normally... They'll strip you down to your underwear or your uh, your tri shorts, and you'll stand in the shower to get cleaned up. All right. We had one of the coldest hell weeks, other than the East Coast, because they used to have hell week in the East Coast. It'd be absolutely freezing. Okay, but it was like 32 degrees in San Diego for like three days straight of our hell week. It was chilly. They gave us coats and hats. Right? They don't ever give you coats and hats to see a train. We had coats and hats on, and it was still freezing. Okay, so we standing out here. I'm the class officer. I always go first. I enter the decon shop. Standing there, I'm waiting for them to call my name to go get my medical inspection. Huh? Well, they don't call my name. The whole class goes by. Okay. Standing there probably an hour. So then I'm like, hmm, all right. Well, I guess we'll play this game. Okay, I'm really good at games at this point. So I'm standing there. So they go get four guys out of my class. I'm gonna make them stand in the decon shower with me. So about 30 minutes later, first guy falls over, carry him away. Five minutes later, another guy falls over, carry him away. Another dude falls over, carry him away. Right. So I'm in this decon shower, just kind of hanging out. Get a little cold at this point, probably been there about an hour and a half. So no more guys left with me. They go get three more guys from my class. Put them in the decon shop. Okay. So everybody's kind of beat down. It's Tuesday hell week. It's hard. So I'm standing in the shower. I'm getting cold now. So I got my arms crossed. I'm just trying to, trying to keep all the water pooled up on your chest so you can stay warm. So I'm laying there. And one of the new dudes falls over. So, okay. I 
try to tell them they're gonna kill somebody, but you know, they're like, right? so I stood there. So I'm in this pecan shower, I'm standing right in the middle. The second dude falls over, and one of the instructors comes over and goes, All right, enough. Sent the other dude back to the class, told me to lay on the cement with my head down. So this is an incline. This is an incline, it's like a ramp that comes up, that's the decon shower, so all the water runs down. So I lay down with my head down here. Now I'm laying on the ground. He's like, we're gonna let the heat, the ground's gonna suck the heat out of you. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Now I'm cold, so I ain't talking too much trash. <laughs> but I, I'm letting him know, like, all right, whatever, bud. Like, we good, we can stay here all day if we have to. So, I'm laying there, and I get up, and I'm dizzy because my head was down here. So now I'm wobbly. These six dudes cheer, we got him! We got him! So I'm like, oh man, I've been in the decon shower. I'll tell you how long later. Okay, I'll tell you at the climax, I'll tell you how long. A little bit. Okay, so I'm in the decon shower, so I'm standing there. They cheering. High fives, fist bumps. We got him! Okay. So they're like, go see Chief One A, get your medical inspection. So I hobble over there. I hobble in, right? Same building where I was in the bathroom. Go in that building. Chief Fonet is in there with the two doctors. I strip down. <clears throat> Chief Fonet says, come here. So they have a probe that they take your temperature with. I'm not gonna go into details. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, bend over. All right. <clears throat> so he's standing there. This is the... the... Flips over, he takes the batteries out. There's a toolbox right there. He goes over the toolbox, he gets two brand new batteries, puts them in the thing, comes back. I'm like, dude, I gotta be cold for him to be looking at this thing like this, right? I'm getting scared because the worst thing that can happen in Hell Week is they pull you out of the class. Because then you gotta go back through first phase again. Okay, so it's week four of training, but it's really week like 12 of training. Right, so I'm over there like now, all my confidence is left at this point. I'm sitting there like, oh man, I'm cold. He's like, how you feeling? I said, good, Chief for that. He said, okay. Can I go back to my class? He said, yeah. Go get your medical inspection first. So I hobble over to the two docs. They look me up and down. Clint Bruce and Tom Ryan, or, uh, Ryan Angle are in there with me. Okay, I could barely stand up. I washed, I didn't change my clothes. So at every medical inspection, you get new socks, new tri shorts, and it's brand new clean. But I refused to get any comforts. So I would wash my stuff. They had this bucket of like sanitary stuff. I washed my stuff out of that bucket, put it right back on dirt. Right? So I put my stuff back on, hobble out to the class. Somebody runs the class. I just, I want to run. Okay? Don't think nothing of it. Right, just another, another wonderful experience of seal training. Okay. So this is where it gets good. So we get done with training, we get secured, it's pouring down rain. Like I guess we were happy, but it was just more so like relief. Like, okay, I'm done with Hell Week. Hell Week is week, week five of a 10 month program. Week five of a 10 month program. Like, think about that. Like, the hardest thing that you do is week five. And then you learn that that ain't even close to the hardest thing to do. Okay? But you think it is. So, boom. I'm in my room. Clint Bruce is my roommate. You take the drawers out of your desk or out of your, your bureau, put them under your bed so your feet are elevated. Your feet are this big. They look like basketballs. Every Your hands are swollen up. Like, you just swoon. Okay? So, we laying in there, and you think you want to go to sleep. But you're so jacked up, so we throwing shoes at each other. Throwing, me and Clint throwing shoes at each other, laughing, just doing dumb stuff. I said, Clint, are you tired? He said, no, I want to go home and see my wife. But you can't leave. For 24 hours, they do hourly bed checks on you. So the docs do rounds, and you get a better medical inspection every hour, basically. Not a big one, but a little one. So I'm laying there. Buck Buchanan was our instructor. So he was an E5, just a savage. Like, we gave him a sword. 
He got arrested in, in Pacific Beach for chopping out a tree with his sword in the middle of the night, drunk. <laughs> like, just an awesome dude, right? So Buck comes in the room, and he pulls a chair up, and he sits it down. Boom, he sits in it backwards, right? And he turns his ball cap around, and he goes, hey. He goes, do you remember Tuesday night? I'm like, Buck, like, I don't remember any night. He said, how about the decon shower Tuesday night? Oh, yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> he said, what do you think your he said, no, he said, first of all, how long do you think you were in the decon shower? I said, mm -hmm. Hour and a half? He was like, no. Two hours and 40 minutes. Wow. Yeah. He said, but that's not the real kind of like frosting on the cake. He goes, how long do you think Everybody else that stood with you was in the decon show. I said, well, I don't know. He was like, nobody made it more than 35 minutes in the decon show with me. He said, every one of them had sub 95 degree temperatures when they, were, when they were checked. He said, okay, so what was your temperature when Chief Fournay took your temperature? I said, man, Buck, I was pretty cold. Let's shoot for 92. He, he picked the chair up. He was like, boom! He's like 99 degrees! <laughs> he said, you didn't get cold, you got hotter! <laughs> so Chief Fone walked out of there, immediately called a safety stand out. So all of the instructors, all 40 instructors involved with Hell Week had a safety stand out, and the rule was put out, do not attempt to get him cold anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do not attempt to get anybody else cold with him <coughs> should you attempt to get him cold. Matter of fact, just leave him alone because he has all your numbers when he told you he don't get cold. And half the instructors were just furious. And life changing experience, don't try to get me cold, I get you. Okay, so let's talk about this, this part right here. So remember, this whole time I'm operating with $4,000 on my head. Okay, it never changed. Pool comp, I passed the first time in pool comp, probably the hardest evolution in SEAL training. That's where I saw 40 people get CPR. Okay, I passed the first time like it was like I was stealing money from a bank. Why? Because I worked every day four hours after training from four to ten, or from six to ten every night on all my procedures. All day Saturday, all day Sunday for three weeks straight. And then when I went to the test, I passed. Okay. It wasn't by accident, it was by preparation. All right, but I had some used stuff. I had to pass the last swim. So this is the last month of training is spent right here in this compound right here, which we're gonna talk about a little bit. We flew in on an airplane, but the last month of training is spent here. I had to pass my last swim to get to the island because we were swimming the Sea State 3, which is four to six foot waves. And they had this little tight wetsuit on me and they wouldn't let me swim without a wetsuit on. Okay? I could swim pretty fast. So I ended up swimming with another guy we're gonna talk about at the end of training, John Zinn, and he punched me in the face because I was crying. Okay, because I swim as hard as I could for two hour, you know, 73 minutes. I swim as hard as I could, and I was like 400 yards short, he punched me in the face. We ended up passing by 20 seconds. Okay, so I'm when I just getting here, there was I could talk for a hundred stories on monumental stuff that happened to me in training, or my class in training. Okay. So boom. Last month of training, I get a warning. There's a chief who don't like people. I'm gonna say it like that so I'll be politically correct. If it gets physical with him, you better kill him. Because he's gonna try to hurt you bad enough that you won't be able to continue training. Okay? Well, I'm good. I wrestled in college, I grew up fighting. One on one, I run with anybody in the world, Lonza MA, MMA fighter. I ain't crazy. <laughs> right? So that's kind of, I went out to the island with some more juice in the, in the tank, right? Then it got good real quick. All right, so there's a pile of rocks right here. And there's a hill called Frog Hill, which you run this way. It's about 400 yards straight up a mountain. There's a big metal frog up there, a brass frog, okay? It's called Frog Hill. And you do flights. So Clint did two flights, okay? I did six more than one. Okay, so on the sixth flight, 
I came down the hill, you have this big pallet on your back. It's a 58 pound metal pallet for aircraft. Had it on, you have it on your back, you're flying it like a plane. Uh, request permission to land. They're like, permission granted. I was like, oh, wave off, wave off. Uh, and I went and did another one. All right? Because you're not going to control me with physical work. I already know I did six more than the rest of the class, five more than the rest of the class. So let me let me let me show you who you're messing with. All right? So boom, I go up, I come down, and the instructor's like, you think you bad? You think you pick up that rock right there? And there's a rock right here. And it was about this big. And it was round. Right? Kind of flat, like a beach rock, like a big beach rock. So I picked it up. That's a seal egg. Carry it to the top of the hill. Alright, cool. So I carry it to the top of the hill. My whole class was lined up down this road. And they had to do this like they were lights. And so the story goes, as I got to the top, Brian Engel was like, he was down here. He said, man, I know Jake laughing at these dudes. So I got up halfway and I was laughing. The class had been standing on this road for the last hour while I carried this pallet up and down. Okay? So I'm laughing like, ah, man, like we got one month left. I eat dirt for a month. All right? So boom, I go up and down the hill. Got the 72-pound rock. I get to the top. And I'm like, yo, I think I can throw this rock down this hill and hit these instructors. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan Angle is standing right here with the instructors. And he's like, man, please, Jake, don't throw this rock up the top. <laughs> he said, man, I got to the top. He said, I lifted the rock above my head. And so in Washington State, when you, when you go hiking at Pikes Peak, it's big shale rock. And if you do like this, you can get it to go down the hill for like three miles. It's really awesome. Probably really dangerous if you put it in there. <laughs> so I rolled this rock. Man, that rock came down here at like 60 miles an hour. There's a fence right here. Went through the chain link fence. All the instructors had to dive out the way. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> so when I get back down this hill, I said, go get that rock. So it rolled in my backpack, in my, in my radio pouch, for the next month. Okay? Think about that. I had to pass a swim with that rock in my backpack. Okay, the story. Right, let's go to. So I'll show you real quick. Got a couple. Okay, right here. Walked. I got a four seventy-two pound rock in my backpack. Still, I was underwater right now. <clears throat> Walk right back out the water. You failed. Okay. It took, it took me to a performance board on the eye. Right? Now I know, and you know, it was a kangaroo court. I laughed at him. And we're kicking you out for failure to pass the swim. So, okay. Let's see how this flies. And I got quiet. And I just got smart, just shut up. They're like, all right, get out of here. Okay? So, 72 pound rock. All right, a couple more stories. Right here. Guy I told you about that I got a big warning from. Give me 500 eight count bodybuilders. Everybody know what an eight-count bodybuilder is? Okay, fall down, do a push-up. All right, do a star jump, push-up, fall down, do a push-up, do a full-weight body squat, into another star jump on eight counts. Okay, 500 of them. Okay. After the first 500, I asked him if that's all he had. Okay, gave him another 500. Okay. I quickly ate those 500. Mm. Okay. And I said, Chief, I hope you don't think you can get me to be your eight count bodybuilder. He turned bright red. He said, What, that little thousand supposed to scare me? Chief? He said, Now give me another 500. Okay, cool. So I got done about halfway through that 500. I was like, I right, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had enough. Okay. So I banged those 500 out at the end. I just looked at them. He looked at me, and he just turned and went inside. So I come in off the grinder, three hours and 45 minutes of eight count bodybuilders. Okay. It's life, right? Like you're not gonna control me through work. You're not controlling me anyway. Like I'm gonna control you. If I, I do what I wanna do, basically. Okay. All right, so 1,500 eight count bodybuilders, all right? So we're doing good in training. We get towards the last end of the month, right? We're getting ready to graduate. 
Come off the island, we're all fired up. We got a couple big FTXs, everything is cool. Got about a week left. Come in the barracks one day, we're setting up. Now we're getting three two hours of sleep at night, at most, at most two hours. Operate all night, train all day, sleep when you can. Okay. So they come into the barracks one day and say, hey, Mr. Zwick, take off all your clothes. Okay. Strip down. Come with me. All right. So we walk, this is the, the barracks. We walk down this road, no clothes on, out onto the beach, and there's a log right here. Strucker got an ammo can and a roll of toilet paper with him. So a round deck cord can and a roll of toilet paper. He flips it at us. You now live out here? Uh oh. Okay. I got like seven days left, right? Eat dirt for a month, I definitely eat dirt for seven days. Okay, so I sat down on a log. Okay. I didn't know how long it was gonna last. I didn't think it would be long. Day one goes by, my guys come down at night, they bring a poncho, we kind of huddle up, they're laughing at I'm like, look, I don't care. It's middle of summer in California, San Clemente Island. It was cold, but it wasn't below 50. So I sat on this log for seven, six, uh, five days, I'm sorry. For five days, I sat on this log. They would come get me when I had to do something, but for the most part, I live right here on the log for seven days with no clothes on. Nothing. Roll toilet paper and dead cord can. And they would bring diesel fuel so I could burn my stuff. Like I was in Vietnam or something. All right? But at the end of the day, it didn't really matter because I ate it all. But to be the, the first graduate of 13, that's what it took. Okay? So I got to graduate. All right? Pretty humbling experience because literally you're graduating from kindergarten. And when you step into a SEAL team, you're in the pros. So you go from kindergarten at six to like 23 being drafted in the first round of the NFL. Okay, it's a huge jump. And you think you've done something at SEAL training until you're at the SEAL team for about a month and you're like, oh my God, it wasn't even close. Okay, that guy right there, John Zinn, that's my swim buddy. I'm responsible. He's responsible for getting me to pass the last two mile swim. A whole bunch of other stuff. Awesome dude. He died in 2010. He's the only, only member of class 217 that's passed away. We got a whole bunch of dudes been shot. He's the only guy that's passed away. Um, his family got a little son named Matt. Looks just like him. We're going to take him to the Silver Union this year. So the Silver Union in the summer is a big.